All right, so I decided to make a video with some extra examples of little mini proofs that we've done throughout our unit two. What you have are two parallel lines, L and M, and I've got some transversals drawn in, and I wanna find the measure of angle X and justify each of my steps. So this really relates to what we did on day six where we included what are called, called auxiliary lines, which are really just extra lines that I can draw in my diagram to create more angles. Okay, so if you want, you can pause this video um, at this time and see if you can solve for X and make sure you justify each of your steps. But um, at this point, I'm just gonna go forward and show you the solution or one of the solutions, I should say, that I can do here. Now, no matter how you start this, you should draw an auxiliary line so that it breaks up this angle X. Okay, and my justification or my equation, what I'm going to write here is construct an auxiliary line so that it's parallel to L and M. And that's important because if I need um, some more angles being congruent, I need the lines to be parallel first. My reason is an auxiliary line can be drawn. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm going to break up this angle into different parts. Um, I'm not going to use numbers in this because I already have angle measures, um, and that would be confusing. So instead, I'm going to break up X into A and B. And my thought process is always, um, how can I get from like the 30 and from the 105 to those angle measures? So it's really about focusing on parallel lines and transversals. So starting down with this angle 30. If I focus, I'm going to highlight this for a second. Focus on these parallel lines being cut by this transversal. When I look at the 30 degrees, I can see its relationship to angle B is that they're corresponding angles. And if I have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, those corresponding angles must be equal. So therefore, B must be 30 degrees. Okay? Now, also, if I want to get toward A, because I know that'll be the sum of these two angles would give me X, I'm thinking, how can I get from the 105 to A? So one idea I have is what if I call this angle over here C? Whoops. And then these form a linear pair. So that means these are 180 degrees. Okay, so that means that this angle C must be 75 degrees because those are a linear pair. And then if these are two parallel lines cut by a transversal, these must be congruent because those are alternate interior angles. So this is kind of just like the idea that I'm coming up with in my head and how I'm going to write this up. So that means this is 75 degrees. Okay, so what we're going to do at step three, let's go back to this angle B. We said that these were corresponding angles, right? So I'm gonna write that angle B is 30 degrees. And that's because if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, corresponding angles are congruent, okay? Now I talked about these, this linear pair here, right? So let's mention that in my proof. I'm going to say that angle C plus 105 is equal to 180, because that's the math I was doing here, and that's because linear pairs are supplementary. And that's what got me that angle C is 75 degrees. Now once I know angle C, I know angle A must also be that because those are alternate interior angles and these are parallel lines. So if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, alternate interior angles are congruent. All right, we're almost there. So remember that your objective was to find x. So x must equal 75 plus 30.
Okay, so X must equal 105 degrees. And that's because if I'm taking each of these parts and summing it and setting it equal to the whole angle, that's just the whole, is equal to the sum of its parts. Now what's important to understand is that one method that I came up with might not be the same as something that you came up with. So let's just say that with the first two steps being the same, let's say I called this A and B still, but I thought of something a little bit different. What if I wanted to use, say, um, vertical angles? So I'm thinking that if this is 105, this is 105. So I'll call that angle C so I can refer to it. So this is 105. Um, likewise, down here, maybe I'll call this D. This would also be 30 degrees because vertical angles are congruent. Okay? So from there, I can get to angle B from angle D being 30 because those are alternate interior angles with those parallel lines. There's that Z shape you're looking for. So therefore, B must be 30 degrees. The relationship between A and C, if you're focusing on these parallel lines, is that they are consecutive interior angles. Therefore, they are supplementary. So angle A must be 75 degrees. Okay, so that's what's going to get us to the same exact place that we did in the other solution. So for good practice, I'm just going to show you how I would write up this solution um, and see how it compares to the one before. So if I'm talking about the vertical angles or if I'm using the vertical angles in my work, I should talk about them in my proof. So at step three, I'm going to say that angle D is equal to 30 degrees and angle C is equal to 105. And that's because vertical angles are congruent. Okay, from there, um, I, I'll talk about angle B first. Um, I don't have to. I could have talked about angle C, but I'll talk about angle B first. Angle B was 30 degrees because these were alternate interiors, right? So I'm going to say that if two parallel lines... are cut by a transversal alternate interior angles are congruent okay that's that so that's how I got angle B is 30 now I knew angle A was 75 because I said that these were consecutive interior angles those are supplementary so it's step 5 okay just to show you my math I'm gonna say angle A plus 105 is equal to 180, and that's how I got angle A is 75. It's because if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, consecutive interior angles are supplementary. <laughs> Handwriting got a little sloppy there on that last one. Okay, and then once I have that, I know that angle X is equal to 75 plus 30. And then just like before, that's because the whole is equal to the sum of its parts. So something else that we did in this unit was little mini proofs where I don't give you any angle measures. I just give you some information with the diagram and I tell you that some things are true and I want you to prove another thing. So here's an example of something that we've done in the notes and the homework where I give you that angle one is congruent to angle two. So I'm going to mark that in my diagram. And I want to prove that angle three is congruent to angle four. Okay, now in order to get angle 3 congruent to angle 4, you got to kind of think backwards here and think, all right, well, if I have these two lines and they're cut by a transversal, I'm thinking that 3 and 4 look like they're alternate interior angles. So if I can prove that those are congruent, then um, that's what I was trying to prove. So how can I get those congruent? Now, starting with angles 1 and 2, those look like corresponding angles to me. 
So since I have corresponding angles being congruent, that means that the lines in which this transversal is going through must be parallel. So I'm thinking, all right, these lines must be parallel because these angles are congruent. Once I have parallel lines, I have two parallel lines being cut by another transversal. So I use pink here, here's your other transversal, which then means that three must be congruent to four because they're alternate interior angles. This is actually a very short proof, but it's worth going through. So if I have my statement reason chart, Obviously first is my given, angle one is congruent to angle two. Now, like I said, I don't have any parallel lines in this in my proof. Um, I didn't give you parallel lines, I just gave you congruent angles. So in my proof, I need to say that L is parallel to M, angle, line L is parallel to line M. And that came from these corresponding angles being congruent, that's what they gave me. So I'm gonna say, if corresponding angles are congruent, lines are parallel, okay? And so um, when we actually did this in class, some of you guys went ahead and you wrote, um, if corresponding angles are congruent, lines are parallel, but then over here you didn't have any lines, you just had one and two. Make sure you're saying these are the lines that are parallel because of the corresponding angles being congruent. So kind of see how that ties in. These corresponding angles are congruent. That's why these lines are parallel. So statement reason, I'm justifying everything I say on the left-hand side for what I say on the right. Okay, so now that I have the lines parallel, you have to think, all right, now I have all those reasonings. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, X, Y, Z happens. So with these two parallel lines, so these guys right here, being cut by this transversal, that's what allows me to say three must be congruent to four. So notice how that my statement's gonna change. Now I'm gonna say, oops, if two parallel lines, see I'm starting with the parallel lines now, are cut by a transversal alternate interior angles are congruent, okay? And that's what I mean here. See, I'm saying all the alternate interior angles are congruent. These are the angles I'm referring to. And that all came from the parallel lines that I proved from in my last step. One other thing in this unit that tends to stump kids is how to solve for X in a diagram like this. So let me call this triangle ABC. And I'll say that side AC has been extended through point D. What you guys are seeing is an exterior angle. It's on the outside of the triangle. These angles right in here are the interior ones. They're inside the triangle. These angles, A and B, are away from this angle B, C, D, which is the exterior angle. So these are what we call the remote interior angles. And remote just means away. So they're away from the exterior angle, but still inside the triangle. So the relationship that we learned is that an exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the remote interior angles. So if I want to solve for x, my equation would be 2x plus 20 plus x is equal to 9x minus 100. And again, the theorem, my justification is the exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the remote interior angles. Okay, so um, if I sum these together, this is 3x plus 20 equals 9x minus 100. I can add the 100 over subtract the 3x, so x plus equal 20, okay? Um, if the problem wanted me to find how many degrees say angle A was, then I just plug back in 20, so that's 40 plus 20, which is 60 degrees, okay? And that's just if the problem asks for it, so just be careful um, to always read the problem.